such a big hit. Um, I received good feedback from it. Figured I'd do another video real quick about the Miata coolant reroute kits. Uh, why that they're good for prolonging the longevity of uh, pretty much any Miata engine. Stock, low mileage, high mileage. Um, most importantly for higher mileage cars, um, tr although a lot of the damage has already been done, um, track driven cars or cars intended for track driving later um, or boosted applications. It's very important uh, in my opinion based on my understanding of the science which I'm about to share with you guys um, that these coolant reroute kits are really good for the longevity of the engine. So let's quickly take a look at um, what engine cooling needs are. Um, if you already know this, I'm sorry. I just think the fundamentals are good to touch on. So I'll try to be real quick. So here um, I have a cylinder, uh, a cylinder, a piston, and this would represent the block of the engine. And then above this green line, this is the cylinder head where the intake air comes in and the exhaust gases are going out. Uh, these are two parts that are bolted together. Um, you will actually have um, the cylinder head bolted to the block. And what I'm representing here with these green lines is like imagine how, you know, the book is coming together um, at, at, and the spine is actually where they meet the green. Imagine that we're just taking those two parts and peeling them away. So we're looking at kind of the cylinder head up here and the and the block down here, but they would really be mat mated together at that green line. You know, this and this are the same, the same place. So um, as these combustion events occur, they give out tons of heat. The heat would be radiating through these walls and I'm making the squiggles bigger near the top on purpose because um, that's just the nature of how heat works. Um, the heat would be generated throughout the entire combustion event as it pushes the piston all the way down, but um, heat rises, so it would be collecting at the top. And then up here at the cylinder head, there'd be a lot more heat, even even more because it's it's much higher up. And then especially over here on the right side, as the hot exhaust gases are being routed out of the head, um, heat is really going to want to congregate around here. So how do we combat it? Uh, we uh, use cooling systems, uh, which run cool water around all these zones. So if we were designing a money is no object, a uh, dream cooling system for a car, uh, we could use 3D printed titanium engine components. We could have whatever kind of internal geometries we want. Uh, money is just no object. We're building the next $8 million hypercar. Uh, it might look something like this. Uh, so we would have an unlimited supply of cold water. Um, and we would have a variable uh, water pump, electric probably, uh, that could deliver any amount of cool uh, water that we wanted. And we would have more power diverted to the top where the cylinder head, which is made out of aluminum and is in, his, in a Miata, is more uh, vulnerable uh, than the Miata's iron cylinder or block, um, engine block. Uh, the, the cylinder head is aluminum and that is more sensitive to warping or overheating problems. Um, and we've got that exhaust valve that's really getting a lot of heat around it. So we would just put the most the most important coolant passage would be at the top, um, and then you know we would kind of cool the middle uh, as best we can, and then you know we divert a little bit of cooling at the bottom, and it would be going in front of the piston and behind the assembly, and just just completely guided, calculated passageways. Um, this is this is the best we could ever have. Unfortunately, we don't have access to these technologies. We're driving thirty year old economy sports cars that are limited by the manu uh, mass production manufacturing process known as sand casting, meaning your cylinder uh, head and your block are both start life as molten hot metal being poured into specially shaped sand. Uh, and then a few machining processes are done to clean them up and make them capable to bolt to stuff. So what do we get? Um, if this is perfect, what, what do we actually get when we, when we have a Miata? Well, it, it looks something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and say this top right photo is not a Miata. This is called an open deck uh, design. It's called an open deck because around all the cylinder walls you see this, this continuous passage. Um, that is where the coolant flows around and cools down each piston uh, before leaving, you know, leaving the engine. 
Um, so this is called an open deck. Miata actually has a closed deck. If you ever pull your cylinder head off or if you look at a head gasket, these ominous looking black holes are actually just this water passage with bridges of material um, used. Uh, it's cheaper to manufacture this way and it's stronger um, in high boost applications. So, you know, it's, it's actually good for, for guys wanting to run turbo. Um, closed deck cylinder uh, blocks are stronger, better for that. So what I like to tell people is imagine that um, somebody is just taking a Lego brick and they just drilled a hole in front of it. Um, here's that hole in the Miata. This is where the water pump installs. And that water pump is just pushing the cold water into this cavity. And it's not ca calculated. There's nothing fancy. There's no math really done to make the water deliver in any optimal way. It just sort of pours in here. It's just being shoved into this um, opening through the water pump. It's just, it's just pushing water, pushing water, pushing water. And it just sort of flows around all the pistons. And then it goes up out of the open side of the Lego brick, you know, um, it goes up through all these little passageways. Um, and it goes into the cylinder head and it cools everything down there last, which is actually bad. If you go back to our dream design, we would be doing the most cooling at the top. Um, but the way that it actually works in the Miata or in almost every production vehicle is that the water is introduced into the cylinder block uh, down at the bottom as cold water and it picks up heat as it gets towards the top, which is the hottest part. So by the time it gets to the hottest part of the engine, it's already been uh, scavenging a lot of heat from the bottom of the engine that isn't as hot. Um, so it's, it's, we've already got some problems there. Um, but no worries, right? You know, so, so here's our system, right? We've got hot water coming into the top of our radiator. It passes through the heat exchanger as air flows over it. It cools the water down. There's our unlimited supply of cold water we were talking about. And then we, the water pump is siphoning it up and collecting it. And it's pushing it through the engine, cooling cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, you know, flowing into the block, going up to the head, cooling all the valves, cooling everything down, coming out the back and going it back into the radiator. That's good. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want. Um, so what's the problem? I mean, other than, you know, it'd be nice to cool the top of the engine first, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm no automotive engineer, um, but that's great. Uh, well, no, uh, this is a front wheel drive engine uh, and the radiator is parallel to the to the entire block. So it can take water in on one side and deliver it on the other and it goes through the whole engine. Well, the Miata's engine was designed for a front wheel drive application, uh, the 323 Protégé uh, platform. So let's go back to that Miata. This little thing up here is actually your return for the radiator. That's where your hot coolant is going out, going into the radiator, and then it cools down and then the water pump is sucking it in. So what does that mean in terms of our Lego illustration? So imagine that we're just pushing this cold water into the front of our Lego and it's rushing in and some of it's rushing past cylinder one, cylinder two, and cylinder three and cylinder four, and then it's all because it's a fluid and this is gaining pressure from water being pushed in. It's all flowing up. It's cooling the, the cylinder head and then it's flowing back out of the front. Okay, um, so what does that really mean? It means that a lot of the water is being pushed into the front. It cools the front of cylinder one, as you can see right here. It travels up the wall of cylinder one, comes out of these two coolant passages on the very front and goes right back out. It cooled a little bit of cylinder one and it left. And a little bit more of the water is gonna go around the outside of cylinder one, cylinder two. It's gonna come up here and it's gonna leave. And a little bit of the water gets halfway to cylinder three and it goes up and it leaves. And the, the water hanging out around the back of cylinder three and around all of cylinder four, it's kind of mixing a little bit with the water that's flowing around and it's sort of, you know, being influenced by the current, but it's not really flowing out uh, of the engine with the same level of heat exchanging we're getting on cylinder one and cylinder two. Cylinder one is a happy little clamp. I mean, it is, it is just cooling down, no problem. Cylinder two, okay, yeah, I think you guys are getting the picture. Um, so what do we do? Well, like I said, Mazda designed the engine in the Miata for a front wheel drive platform. So we actually have an identical opening 
on the back of the head that looks just like this one on the front. So what a coolant reroute kit actually does is it puts a block off plate here. It opens the other opening, which is an identical diameter uh, that's on the back of the engine. And then it gives you basically what you need to run a thermostat back there. And it has an opening for you to run your upper radiator hose or your hot side of the radiator hose around to the front of the engine and into the factory um, location on the radiator. Uh, a lot of track cars, when they tear down the engines after failure, um, the failure is in the piston rings on cylinder three, three and four, especially cylinder four. A lot of times when your car just runs into, you know, 329,000 street miles and the engine wouldn't give anymore, the failure is happening in the black back of the engine if there was no reroute installed. Uh, this is proven. Uh, it's not just theory, um, but this is the theory is that, you know, your your engine is not this super cleverly designed. I mean, it is cleverly designed. I could not do a better job, but it's not this German engineered perfect, you know, like <sighs> internal geometry is is exotic and, and 3D printed and whatever you want the water to go, it's going to go there. It's 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 an, a mass produced economy car. And, you know, it's 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 the same engine design that's been working for you know a hundred years for mankind it's it's but it's just kind of a dumb open water thing and you're just shoving water into the front of it and hoping for the best and it's just kind of mixing around and flowing right back out of the front of the engine so i think um i can answer anything else in comments and stuff i don't want this video to be super long i'm sure it already is because that's just the nature of how i talk but Hopefully the this was more interesting um, because the graphics changed. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and uh, look forward to the feedback on this one too.